Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday. I know it's a little bit early for my breakdown, but I am going away tomorrow, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get around to doing it uh, after that. Uh, hopefully we keep the 12 fights that we have. It is a very, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a card, it's a slate that has quite a bit of upside as far as points go. So it's important to know the difference between analyzing this one from a GPP perspective and a kind of like best plays perspective. Um, and, and with a little background, uh, I'm actually in round two of that qualifier that I um, qualified four months ago. I got down to the final hundred and last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, we, uh, played it from a hundred players down to 40 and I survived. So now it's the last round before the live final. So 40 of us, uh, well, 40 entries go, uh, we battle and the top 15 uh, advance to the live final. So it's the way I have to approach that is, is definitely different than the way I have to approach, uh, from a GBP perspective. And I think it'd be fun to kind of, uh, well, I can't actually obviously build my lineup right now. I will um, I will analyze the fights from both kind of sides, like what the good plays are and what and how you're supposed to be playing this from a GPP perspective. Uh, so that was an absolutely atrocious introduction to this. But uh, let's let's just get right into the fights here because I think they're all very interesting. So right off the bat, we have. Uh, Sato versus Garimbo. And from a pricing perspective, it's usually a fight that you want to kind of target because, you know, if you can get away with, you know, getting a good score out of this fight, it just makes the rest of your lineup construction you know, that much easier. Um, so let's just take a look and see what, you know, the metrics are, see if we can get a good inside of distance prop or see what's going on here. So even though it's pick them, each of these fighters have their own kind of uh, their own kind of path to good GPP uh, goodness. Sato has the better of the two inside the distance props. If you look at it, uh, Sato inside the distance is about a plus one seventy if you account for big, where Garimbo is maybe more like plus three hundred. So even though it's a pick and fight. As far as pure KO and, and inside the distance upside, Sato is clearly the better GPP play. I mean, it's not even remotely close. But where Garimbo kind of picks up a little steam is possibly in the grappling. Um, although, you know, he, he did get submitted in his last fight. He was against AJ Fletcher, who's probably just a better wrestler than he is. But Garimbo does have some regional tape and some, some good grappling on his resume. And considering how Sato's, you know, takedown defense is extremely poor, you can certainly see an avenue for Garimbo to, to try to, you know, try to take advantage of that. So, as you know, DraftKings scoring does favor the grapplers and the wrestlers. So even though Garimbo's inside the distance prop is a little worse or much worse than Sato, um, he does pick up some of that in, uh, in, in, in grappling upside. Is it enough to overcome the obvious difference in inside the distance? I honestly don't know. I, I originally thought that it was not even remotely close. You know, the style matchup is just so much in favor of Garimbo. But if Sato does win, just so many of his victories involve kind of first round and maybe even second round KO finishes that you have to you have to respect that. Um so I think that this is a fight you could probably want to target. I wouldn't say a must, but I definitely think it's a priority, um, if that makes any sense. And if I had to pick between the two of them, boy, oh, boy, I, I was going to say Garimbo. I would lean more towards him, but I think it's probably very, very close. I think I would, if I played two lineups and I wanted to target this fight, I would really just play one of each. Um, and if it was really between... You know, if you had one lineup that you wanted to assign to this, really just kind of flip a coin. Um, although another way to kind of approach it is realizing that if you do play Garimbo, it's a little more of a safe uh, approach to it. In other words, even though they're both, you know, it's kind of a pick and fight, 
like Garimbo could even, I don't know. It, it, it just seems as though his, he can get a finish or he can get a decision with a good score where it doesn't look like Sato is going to get a decision with a good score. So I feel as though Garimbo is probably the safer play. So if you want to put Garimbo in lineups with more aggressive fighters, and we'll get to them later, I think that makes that makes some sense. And if you want to put Sato in lineups with more conservative fighters later to kind of juice up your, your lineup there, I think that makes sense. But overall, I do think that both these fighters are good GPP plays. And I think Garimbo is probably a little bit better of a kind of a conservative play. All right, moving straight up the board here, we have uh, Silva and Leonardo, and, and Silva's a minus 900 favorite. Uh, you don't get, I mean, usually you, you get one of these, you know, every couple of weeks. And DraftKings has done a pretty good job kind of pricing these these fighters up. She is now at 9,700. Now, we, we talk about this quite a bit, you know, even though she's an extreme, you know, she's extremely likely to win, and she's minus 700, that doesn't mean that her ceiling is any higher, right? All it means is that she's going to achieve her ceiling, whatever that is, more often than somebody who's a minus 200 favorite, okay? And we're going we're gonna to compare her to, like, maybe, well, let's do it right now. Let's compare it to, like, Anthony Hernandez, for example. So, Anthony Hernandez is 9,400 and uh, Silva is 9,700. Who's more likely to win? Well, Anthony Hernandez is only a minus 250 favorite. So uh, obviously, Silva is more likely to win. What are their ceilings? Well, Hernandez, because of all of his wrestling upside, he probably can you know, put up numbers, say 125, 130, if things kind of go his way. Where Silva, you know, just because of the nature of women's MMA and, 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 and the way things go, even if everything kind of goes her way, I think her best path and her best score is probably first round knockout, right? She's not going to be the one that gets like a zillion takedowns and then goes ahead and gets a late second round submission after getting two rounds of control time for 125 points. Her probably best pass is to go out there and beat Leonardo to death in the first round and make like, yeah, you know, get like 110, you know? So, She's going to be able to do that probably more often than Hernandez is going to make his 120, 125. But um, does that mean that Silva is a better play? You know, it, it's a very, very legitimate question. Um, so, yes, Silva is very, very safe to win. Um, and I'm really thinking about right now whether I want to play her in that uh, qualifier contest. Uh I was really struggling with this. I can't really get into the whole line of construction, but originally it was just, I was locking in Anthony Hernandez and two other fighters and then figuring out the other three. And I really wasn't considering putting Silva in, but the more I'm thinking about this, I'm really considering it. I might just take both the Hernandez and Silva and then just kind of, just kind of try to survive the other four um, spots. I don't know. Uh, Nonetheless, uh, when you look at Silva's inside the distance prop, it is extremely strong. But, you know, 9,700 is a lot. And Silva, inside the distance, she is about one, minus 160 or so, which is, which is good, okay? And that's at least what you're going to need, you know? Uh, normally, $9,700 fighters, you need the combination of both a good inside the distance prop and – a, you know, that grappling upside. Um, Silva, I don't know, in her last fight, she was actually the one that was getting control. Um, the, the Bladis, who was her opponent, she took down Silva a couple of times. So it's possible that Silva's takedown defense isn't all that great. Um, so if you get the situation where Leonardo just kind of clinches Silva up against the fence and God forbid even takes Silva down once, it's going to really suck all the upside out of her, out of her as, as far as a DFS play. So um, it, it's definitely risky to play the 9,700 for her. And I do feel as though Hernandez is probably a better play. Um, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, I also think that Silva, I thought that Silva was going to be kind of low owned as a result of this, but first ownership runs I'm seeing have her like 30, 40%. And I don't know. I, I just, I just, 
think that her path to victory is so limited and even her best path might not actually even make the optimal. So it's a, uh, it's a tough GPP play to make in cash. You could probably get away with it. And in the qualifier, I'm still struggling. All right. Chase Hooper versus Nick Fiore. So this is what I want to do. I want to compare two fighters at the same time. Cause I think they're very, well, they're very similar. Uh, and I was actually struggling with struggling over this when I was doing my qualifier analysis. So I want to look at both the Hooper Fiore fight and the Urbina Kosti fight. Um, let's first of all, let's take a look at the odds. So th they're very similar. You have Kosky is about a minus one. Let, let's, let's cut the big here. So maybe a minus one twenty or one fifteen. And then you have, um, what's your name? Then you have Fiori, again, minus 120-ish, maybe. So it's very, very similar. Um, but let's also compare a third one. So let's also compare Demopolis, Carolina, Cobalt, Cambridge, because these are the same odds. Um, well, a little bit different. Maybe it's a little bit higher. I do want to compare the Urbina to Hooper play because this is what I've been kind of struggling with. So Hooper Fiore is a very interesting matchup. Um, listen, there's no line value here really. Um, at, at that price, you can expect about 8,300, 7,900, which is, which is kind of fair. The only thing I would say is that Hooper probably has more takedown upside than Fiore. Um, so if there's a similar inside the distance prop, I think that Hooper is probably a better play. Let's take a look at the inside the distance prop of both these fighters here. Fiori inside the distance is, uh, about plus 200, uh, maybe more like plus 180 and Hooper maybe plus 230. So Hooper has a worse inside the distance prop, but with the grappling upside, I think it makes up for it. I think that they're both. They're both very similar. So I think that Fiori and Hooper are both playable. And I don't really have that much of a lean one way or the other uh, as far as this particular fight goes. Now compare that because, listen, you do have to try to find some underdog. So Hooper's certainly going to look somewhat viable. Let's compare him to, to Kosuke and Urbina because it's a similar type of, of line, right? Kosuke minus 120-ish, Urbina about a pick him. You look at the, the pricing, though. Um, you have Kosuke at 8,400. So there might be a little bit of line value in Urbina where it doesn't really exist in Hooper. So from a pure line perspective, Urbina might be a little bit of a better play than Hooper. But then you go back to that grappling upside that Hooper has. And, and when you factor that in, I think Hooper might be a better play than Urbina as far as kind of that low, you know, that low mid-range underdog. Um, now, on the other hand, you have Kosuke, even though his line value is a little weaker, right, because he's 8,400 and um, only minus 120, comparing him to, to Fiore, even though Kosuke, look at his inside the distance prop. Kosuke inside the distance is like plus 220, which is like a little worse, I think, than Fiore. Um, Fiore again was my plus 180. Kosuke has all the grappling upside. You know, Kosuke is basically going to be a pure wrestler. So I think that kind of makes up for it. So I think it's it's very interesting comparison. All four legs of these of this these two fights. Hooper and Fiore and Urbina and Kosky. And I think it's a struggle. I, th I think that um, you can make a case literally for all four of these and be well within your rights. Now, what's interesting is that from a pure GPP perspective, like as far as upside goes, I do think that all four legs are sort of lacking. You know what I mean? Like I I've been looking at these at these fighters and these fights, you know, primarily for my qualifier, you know, and, and, and so I've been really just doing a lot of work on, on, you know, how my lineup construction is going to play out, whether I play Urbina versus Hooper or Kosuke versus Fiore, 
because those are the types of plays I need to play in a, in a contest that needs to come from 40 to 15. But when I'm really, really looking at this upside here, I mean, it's not that great, you know, for any of these guys. You know, Kosuke, sure, I mean, he's got that grappling upside. I guess that makes some sense. Urbina doesn't look like he's got much at all. You know, let's look at Urbina's inside the distance prop. Urbina inside the distance is plus, I guess it's not bad, like plus 230. But compare again Urbina to Hooper. Hooper is about a plus 230 with the grappling upside. So I think if you're going to play one of these four or one of these two underdogs, again, in GPPs, it's probably going to be Hooper. Okay, And if you're going to play one of these um, uh, favorites, I think it's probably going to be Koski. Um, so I guess that's my analysis of those of both of those fights. All right. Uh, Nascimento versus Latifi. So Nascimento is a minus 190. Um, so I imagine he's going to be probably like 9K or something like that in DraftKings, and that's what he is. So for 9K, I mean, you're going to need either an inside the distance prop of about Pickham or uh, a decent amount of grappling upside. And and Nascimento is not going to be the one with the grappling upside here. If anything, Latifi is going to be the one going for takedowns. So we're really just kind of looking for the inside the distance prop on Nascimento. And I think mean, it's plus 140-ish. I mean, just not the best, okay? I mean, listen, if you're playing 150, you probably have to throw him in, but definitely not going to be a priority. And Latifi, you know, at 7,200, I mean, he's going to be going for the takedown. And and if he does get them, I mean, you think that that was his win condition, right? I mean, he's he's only look at the price here. I mean, he's plus one. He's only plus like one seventy, which means about forty percent of the time he's going to win, right? Or thirty five percent. And in his wins, he's probably going to get takedowns. And, and you have Latifi at seventy two hundred. With his win condition being takedowns, I mean, this is a, this is a G, this is really a play that is really viable in GPPs, and it's also at the same time probably an extremely poor play in the qualifier. Okay, um, and that's again the big difference. So in GPPs, I really feel as though Latifi, as gross as this this might be to play, probably a better play. Than than Nascimento as far as your your you know especially your lottery GPPs because if in fact he does win which is not that likely but if he does it's going to put up a score that really can rival the optimum at seventy two hundred so um, that's that fight um, okay so I mentioned already Karina, uh, Carolina Kovalkiewicz against Vanessa Dimopoulos I think this is more of a fight to analyze either for the qualifier or for, for betting or, you know, for anything else doesn't seem like it has, you know, any real, not any real, but enough DFS upside to really focus in on the GPPs. Um, you know, the, the pricing is, is, it's kind of what you want to see, right? 80, was it 8,300? It's actually 8,500, 7,700. I mean, it's it's similar in pricing to these other fights that we just talked about, right? I mean, it, it's very similar to the Kosuke fight. As a matter of fact, I mean, Global Kwich is priced higher than Kosuke with much less grappling upside. Um, and her inside the distance prop is... Pretty, pretty poor, right? I mean, plus 800. So she's Bob, probably the first full fade kind of of the day. Um, the Demopolis side has a little bit of interest because she does have a little bit of takedown upside, sort of. Um, and I, I've been, again, I'm studying this fight for just probably way too long because um, I was considering, probably still am, um, whether I want to use this, you know, the Demopolis side in a qualifier. But what I went back to is that in her last fight against, uh, not her last fight, one of her recent fights against Gomez Suarez, she did end up with, with a submission, but she got 
crushed before that. You know, she was in danger of getting finished really early. And yes, it does show toughness, which is good, but I don't know. It's uh it's 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 really a tough one. Um now she's probably gonna be low owned. And in her wins, I I was about to say in her wins, she's gonna score well, but not that's not always the case, you know. I, I'm not sure that that she's gonna just get all these takedowns against Kobo Kavich and she could win kind of a you know volume, you know, kind of a striking based decision, which might not be good enough. So I think that Demopolis is probably on the outside looking in as far as the GPP exposures. I mean, I'd certainly rather play, you know, at a similar price, somebody like Hooper. Actually, it's not he's actually the same price. That's actually not fair. Um, you know, Demopolis, well, Demopolis 7,700. I'd rather play an extra 200 for Hooper or even maybe even an extra 100 for Urbina, but certainly 200 more for Hooper. With with a better inside the distance prop, and uh, more more uh, grappling upside, so I think that, that Demopolis, listen, in one fifty max, yeah, sure, it's do do whatever, and it does make your lineup construction work, right? I mean, you play more of these seventy seven hundred fighters and get away with it, then you could you know do other stuff, but from a GPP upside perspective, I think this is probably kind of poor. All right, so Boroshev against Mahashate. Um, we'll talk about this from a betting perspective a little bit later, but let's just first straight analyze this from a DraftKings perspective. So now again, we're comparing kind of like creatures here. So you have Boroshev is a minus 160. Let's also put in the, not Kovalkiewicz, but we'll put in Diego Ferreira, who's like minus 150. Okay. And let's also put in Lopi Godinez, who's minus 150. So Ferreira 150, Borshev 150, Gondinez 150. And, and this is actually one of the main points that I'm struggling with um, in my qualifier analysis. Um, and I think we're going to get some answers with respect to GPPs as well. So first, let's let's compare these prices. Okay. Um, you have Borshev 8800. Compared to Ferreira, 8,700. And then, well, Koski was 8,400. And then Gudinius is 8,600. So all these are very similar. You would say that Borshev is a little bit more expensive. Gudinius is a little bit cheaper. Okay. And they're all very, very similar. So let's compare all of their win conditions. Let's compare all of their inside the distance problems. Now, again, one thing I've not talked about is ownership yet because it's really just not out. Um, I don't really feel as though any of these got fighters that we're talking about are going to be particularly more chalky than the others. I mean, as, as I struggle with all these decisions, I think that others will as well. And I think you're going to get a very, very spread out bunch of ownership in most fights, the exception of Hernandez, who I think is going to be extremely popular. Um, and we'll get to him back to him in a minute. So let's start, I guess, with, with the Borshev fight. So he's the most expensive. Um, there's, there's probably very efficient line value here. You know, no, it's not as if one guy is more line value than the other. So let's just go straight to the win condition and inside the distance prop. So Borshev has no win condition other than his, um, you know, volume and uh, finishing upside. It's not a grappler. So we have to see what this is all about. So Borshev is inside the distance is plus 120 or so, which is extremely, extremely good. Okay. Um, you remember, if he were 9,100, we'd want to pick him. So he's almost there at only 8,800. It's a good play. It's not, you know, smash lock play. Okay. Because again, it's not as though it's minus 110, but it's plus 120. So it's a very, very strong play. Um Compared to Ferreira, so Ferreira, his inside the distance prop is worse, I would imagine. Yeah, his inside the distance prop is about a plus 140, but he has grappling upside, okay? Um, he, he, he can get those submissions, but in doing so, he can also obtain uh, takedowns and top control, which may make up for the worst of the inside the distance prop between him and Borshev. 
So I think between the two of those fighters, I, I really do think it's kind of a draw. The, the, the fighter that is, is very, you know, confusing is, is Godinez, okay? Because it's one of those fighters that, that if you just kind of look at the metrics here, it's, it's, she's not even remotely playable, right? She's minus 150, same as these others. And you look at her inside the distance prop and it's like plus a thousand. I mean, like it's, it's just ridiculous. Okay. Um, now the thing is though, is that she, um, has a reputation and she has a background for wrestling. And we know that if you can get a wrestler to get it going, you get quite a bit of upside. Now, here is the problem. The problem is this. You know, you go back, and when we first kind of introduced her, introduced to her, it was um, uh, when she fought Sylvia Gomez Suarez, who we just referred to kind of earlier. She just laid it on her. She had five takedowns and a sub in the first round and blasted her and route to 127 points. Okay. Then everybody played her. Everybody thought she was a lock. Everybody thought she was going to get a million takedowns against Luana Carolina. She was 9K and she could get nothing done. Okay. She took a couple of attempts at takedowns and, and failed. And then basically just, just put on a dud performance. Then they, you know, they made excuses and they said, okay, you know, Carolina was big, you know, there was, so everybody just played her again against Lukumi. Okay, same thing. She got the five takedowns, okay, which was great. She didn't get the, uh, you know, she didn't get the, the 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 finish, and she got a decent score, eighty six points. Not not great, but you know, not bad certainly with five takedowns. But what you see is that with her five takedowns, she really didn't pile on any of those significant strikes or those strikes that you like to see, which is why she only had eighty six. Then in the next fight, it was it was she was back, okay, because she was against Arnold Carnalosi. It was like a wild fight where Carnalosi was just really aggressive as well, and Godinez got a million takedowns, all the control time, hundred million points. So then everybody played her again against Angela Hill at ninety two hundred, and seemingly inexplicably, she just didn't. She got one takedown, and that was it. And she got basically pieced up on the feet. I wouldn't say pieced up on the feet. She did have 98 strikes of her own, 92 significant strikes of her own, and she lost at 9,200. So then in her last fight, I hate to keep doing this, uh, she fought Cynthia Calvillo. Again, people were saying, okay, which loopy am I getting? I hope she gets all these takedowns. And once again, she basically went for no takedowns. Um, so what's, what's, what's interesting here is that for you to put Loopy up alongside of these other fighters, you need the parlay of not only her winning, but her deciding to opt for the style that is going to score the most, right? Um, and yes, it, it, it helps that if she does apply that style, it's more likely she wins, but in her head, she just came off of a victory where she didn't even need it to get takedown. So I, I could see a variation where she does the same thing. Um, so I don't think that – so on the one hand, I don't think that in GPPs it's wise to rate her alongside of, say, Ferreira and Borshev. However, if <laughs> – and this is the thing about her history – if she does go back to that other style – and she gets things going her own way, she can put up a ceiling that you're going to need to have in GPPs. So is that possibility and that variance enough to move her alongside of those other two fighters? I think the answer is yes. So I think that 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 the Godinez, Barrera, and 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 Borshev are all very similar. And I think they're all very good plays. Um, on the other side of it, what's what's tricky is that neither of their opponents, okay, have particularly strong um, 
uh, metrics. Well, let's just let's just talk about it. Maybe Mashet Mahashate. Well, let's let's analyze his first. Um, Mahashate at only seventy four hundred. He doesn't need to have that big of an inside the distance prop to be viable, and he's plus about three twenty, which is not bad. Okay, so it, it's it really is kind of hard to believe that he's gonna win inside the distance um, because what I've heard, his big path to victory is somehow deciding to go for wrestling. So does that exist in his win condition? I guess maybe. So he does have an inside the distance prop, which is, which is pretty fair, um, which makes him playable. If he goes for takedowns, Borshev is certainly poor at defending them. So maybe you could add that in. So maybe Machete is Mahashate is a playable underdog of that you know group of three fights. As opposed to like, look at Michael Johnson. So Michael Johnson, let's look at his inside the distance prop. He also is plus 320 or so, but he doesn't have that wrestling even as a possibility. And he's a little bit more expensive than Mahashate. So I don't know. I, I, I think that both these are kind of on the poor side, um, but playable. You know, so Johnson, Mahashate, I would not like prioritize them as underdogs, but I think they're playable. And then you have Ducote at 7,600. Again, we're kind of analyzing like, you know, like prices here. Ducote, I imagine, is going to have a very poor inside the distance, probably much worse than plus 300. Yeah. So he's played plus 400. No takedown upside. So Dakota is going to be like the outs on the outside looking in as far as the underdogs. And the, the only thing reason I mentioned that we're kind of comparing like fighters to like fighters is that if one of these fighters that I, I identified is going to, I thought was going to be significantly higher on the other, then I would say, you know what? Like if, if, um, if for whatever reason, Ferrero is going to come into 40% ownership, I would say, you know, what, just take Michael Johnson, you know, because he's probably no worse than Mahashate as far as a play. And if you were going to get better leverage, then I would go do that. Um, but I think, again, I think the ownership is going to be spread out enough that you just kind of want to make the best plays. So I think that Dakota out, um, Mahashate for uh, Johnson, decent, but not priorities, but better than Demopolis, for example. Um, and, uh, but I do think that are they better than Latifi? So like Latifi, again, inside the distance is like not that much worse than these others, but he has the takedown upside. So I think Latifi actually might be the better, and he's going to be lower on. He's got to be. Um, Latifi is probably a little bit better than, than Johnson. Probably about the same as Mahashate, I think. Um, okay. So we, we analyzed a bunch of like fights, and now we're going to talk about things that are just kind of just different. So Joaquin Buckley against Andre Fiala, this is kind of a, a you know, your pure kind of like, you know, DFS, GPP analysis. You have a 90, was he 9,200 or 9,000? You have Buckley is 9,300 against 6,900. So we're just kind of have to analyze it from a, a, a metrics perspective. Um, Buckley at minus 225, that's, you know, fair enough. You know, that 9,300 is, is fair enough. But at 9,300, again, what you're going to need, man, you're going to need at least minus 110 inside the distance. You probably need more than that. You want to know the truth. Unless, unless you're going to get grappling upside to go along with it. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's look at Buckley here. Buckley inside the distance is not quite there. You know, I, I was expecting to see him a little bit better. But he is no work, no better than um, who was um, who was the other one that was plus one twenty or so? Was it who was the plus one twenty? I, I already I already forgot. Was it Hernandez? Well, yeah. For example, like Hernandez is plus one twenty also. Um, but we'll get back to him. 
but he's got he's got all that grappling upside. Like there's no there's no universe where Buckley's a better player than Hernandez. I mean, literally no universe, with the exception of the fact that he's probably going to be lower on. Um, so, oh, we were comparing him to Silva, right? So Silva was the one, right? So she was a plus. She was a minus one seventy five. So her said this is probably much better. Buckley's a little bit cheaper. But I definitely think that Buckley is probably the weaker of these 9Ks. What was it? Nascimento? Was he 9K? Yeah, he was 9K. Yeah, look at Nascimento, plus 135. A little worse than Buckley. So I think Buckley, listen, it's, it's reasonable. It's not, it's not quite good enough. But if he's going to come in low-owned, yeah, I mean, you, you can certainly get that first round K up. The, the, certainly the more interesting, I think, piece of this fight is Fialo. Um, Fialo is only 6,900. And if you look at his inside the distance plot, he's like plus 320 inside the distance. And, and, and that's kind of the same as these other plus 320s that we talked about. You know, like Michael Johnson it was a plus 320 inside the distance or so, right? We had Mahashate was plus 320 inside the distance, and they're all like $500 more. So I think Fialo is a is a much better GPP play than all those other three. Um, so that's where, that's where I stand on this one. I think Buckley's – the only thing that's worse about, about Fialo is that Buckley's not going to be as highly owned, so you're not going to get that kind of leverage, but who cares? He, he gets the KO at 6,900. I don't care how, how long Buckley is, if you want to know the truth. So I think Fialo at GPPs – very, very strong. I'm not, I wouldn't play him in the qualifier because the other thing about the qualifier, by the way, is that you have to account for, for, you know, for picking fighters that even if they lose, they're not going to put up zeros, you know, because it's very possible that you can go five for six, even four for six, man, maybe not four for six, but five for six and get there um, uh, as far as the qualifier goes. But Fiala, if he loses, I mean, he could, he could just put up a zero, which you can't, you just can't play that. I think the thing I mentioned about the wrestling is that there has been talk that Buckley's been working on his wrestling. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think that this is going to be a firefight. You know what I mean? I think I, I really do think that one of these guys wins in the first two rounds. Um, but Buckley needs to win in the first, you know, to get it done. Um, so I don't know. I think Buckley's kind of a weaker, one of the weaker GPP plays. Um, I mean, weaker than these other nine Ks. Is he weaker than the other ones? That's actually a good question. I definitely think he's worse than Hernandez. We're going to get to Dern in a minute. All right. Um, okay, so once again, so Anthony Hernandez against Edmund Shabazzian. He's minus 225. And he's being priced, you know, maybe a little bit high for, for 225. He's 9,400. But whether by accident or not, I mean – they priced him in a way that is severely underpriced given his win condition because um, not only does he have an inside the distance prop, which is, you know, sort of competitive, not really, but plus 120 is really, it's really not great for 9,400, but his entire path to victory is just, is just draft, draft King's gold. You know, it's just take down, take down, take down, control, take down, take down, take down, take down. And Shabazian is unfortunately for him, the perfect fighter to give all the money. You know, uh, in in Hernandez's win conditions. You know, if, if look, if 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 Hernandez does not get the takedowns, and Sebastian is just that good on the feet, then it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> then 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 we don't care if he had Hernandez or not because he's just going to lose. But in Hernandez's wins, he's just going to score just a ton, right? So so he, he's. To me, clearly the best play on the slate is going to be. I, I saw these ownerships. I, I couldn't quite imagine why he wouldn't be the highest owned. Uh, we'll talk about Dern in a minute, I guess. But um, I uh, listen, I can't tell you who I'm playing my qualifier, but if I don't play Hernandez, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, now, in GPPs, look, as I mentioned, 33% um, of the time or so, Sabrazian is going to win. And when Shabazian wins, He's probably going to be optimal. Why? Because in his wins, he probably gets chaos. You know, he, Hernandez doesn't get the takedowns. Hernandez's striking defense is not great. 
and Shabazian gets takedowns and not only does he get takedowns, excuse me, Shabazian not only gets maybe KOs, but he gets a win over the highest owned plot fighter on the slate. So I, in, in GPPs, you just have to play. Him. Okay. Um, so in a way, I think this fight is, should probably be a hundred percent. Okay. Because either Hernandez wins and scores a ton or Shabazian wins and you get all the leverage. So that's, I guess it's my opinion there. So this, this Hill Dern fight is, is a little bit confusing to me. Um, so when it's confusing, let's just kind of analyze it from a, a numbers perspective. Um, so it was supposed to be three rounds a couple of weeks ago. They moved it to five. I think the five rounds helps both fighters win conditions. Well, I think it helps their scoring conditions significantly. And this is why. So Dern's, well, let's look at the pricing first. So first of all, it's minus 175. So you're probably supposed to see about 8,800 or so, but you're getting a pretty big freaking price difference here. 9,100, 7,100 for this price discrepancy. I mean, you have, there's nobody else's minus 175 exactly to compare it to, but um. I mean, Borshev is close. What's Borshev's price? I mean, his, his odds. It's months 170. What's it? I guess it's fair enough. I, I I just feel as though that she should probably be more like 8,900 or something like that. And you have Anthony Hill at 7,100 at, at less than two to one odds. I mean, like that, that seems reasonable from a money line perspective. Now, with respect to their win conditions in five, in five rounds, you know, Mackenzie Dern is is – her win condition is is quite honestly a submission. You know, um, that's how she wins all her fights. And that's the way she's going to win if she wins. She's not really a good striker. She's not even really a good wrestler. You know, she, she doesn't really get a lot of takedowns and control time. She just kind of hunts for submissions. And if you got 15 minutes to get one in a three-round fight, I mean, you know, you got to get, got to get on it. You get lucky, and 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 you, the, the opponents only has to defend in your fifteen minutes. But you have twenty five minutes to get them. It just it just provides like more possibilities for for Dern to get those get that submission. Um, in addition to that, the, the five round fight certainly is going to help Angela Hill. So Angela Hill is just going to be a volume striker. Keep the fight on the feet and just rack up points and rack up significant strikes. Now, where normally that's not the way you win GPPs, uh, she can do it. You know what I mean? Like, like when you have uh, someone like uh, Mackenzie Dern is not the greatest striker, and Angela Hill, who just this is what she does. I mean, she she gets volume off, and specifically against guy against fighters that you know uh, want to take her down. Uh, to wit, uh, we talked about um, uh, Godinez, like her fight against Godinez. She she racked up a whole bunch of significant strikes, um, just trying to keep her at bay. And those fights, those add up over five rounds. So, I mean, her win condition is, you know, is a five-round decision where she can score 80, 90, 100 points even. You know, it's possible. Um, not only that, I mean, if she if she fights and keeps keeps it on the feed and just, just keeps on racking up points and then Dern gets a late-round submission – who even scores better? I mean, I, I don't even know, you know? So the, the Dern thing is confusing because I don't really see her ceiling from these third, fourth, and fifth round submissions that she might, that the five round fight is going to, uh, you know, afford her. I still think that the, the five rounds isn't going to really help her in GPPs. If she gets a fourth round submission. I don't think it's good enough. You know what I mean? Um, for her to get there in GPPs, I really think she, considering how long she's going to be, I really think she needs a first or at the worst, a second round submission. Um, um, so I, I really think that she is, I don't know, I, I think that she's no better than Buckley, if you want to know the truth, as a GPP player. Um, is she as good as Buckley? I think they're very similar. I mean, I think that Buckley... You know, he's favored to win inside the distance, and he's going to get at least 90 if he wins inside the distance, right? But let's let's look at, at, at Hill, at Dern. Dern inside the distance is 
plus 180? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I just, I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to do it in the qualifier. I mean, if anything, I think I'll, I'm, I'm considering doing Angela Hill on the qualifier. You know, she, she, she's got to last around, you know, two rounds, right? I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know exactly what I'm doing in the qualifier yet, but I, I don't think Dern is a good GPP play this week. Just, uh, I think that as far as upside favorites, I think Hernandez is the best. The more I think about this, I mean, maybe, maybe you can just kind of get away with playing Buckley, you know, or maybe you can just either or get away with just playing these middling guys and hoping you get ceilings out of these, these this Hooper fight. Or this Kosuke fight, or the or 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 the or the Borsha fight. I just don't want to play too much of Dern. You know, I think that's that's the bottom line here. Um, she's going to be owned, and even even her not her best win condition, like her f- first round submission, the hundred ten points. I mean, what she might not, first of all it might not even be hundred ten. It might be like ninety five um, in a first round submission. Um, what about Al- Almeida from this past week? He got his exact win condition, right? He got a first round takedown and submission, and he basically busted. Um, he, he would have busted on any other card at 9,700, scoring 104 points. Um, so just be careful about playing too much Mackenzie Dern. Boy, this was a long one, but uh, hope we don't lose any fights as a result of this. But just, I guess, to summarize, I think... Dart throws like Fialo are just kind of badass plays this week. Think that Urbina is probably just a little bit too safe for me. Latifi could be a kind of a badass dart throw. That that would be a fun one. You get that big boy home, that'd be nice. I think Hooper obviously can do it. He can put up a ceiling. Leonardo. I think Leon, by the way, I, th- I do think Leonardo is live, by the way, it, with her win condition. It's just the problem is that her, not a, with her win condition, I think that she can make this fight difficult if she grinds and against the cage. But I just can't play her in GP. I just can't play her when she's a minus plus 500. It's, just, it's plus 700. I can't do it. Um, the more I think about it, may, maybe Sato is just kind of the better play here. I don't, yeah, actually, I'm going to go, go back to them being equal. All right. That's a lot to think about. Um, wish me luck in the qualifier. Wish me luck in GPPs. I will post my lineup once I, once uh, the fight, once it starts. And uh, you can all root me in. Good luck.